Okay, let's look at the four events that take place in the air conditioning and let's throw some of the terms in that we've learned already. So coming from my receiver dryer, I'm going to have a high temperature, high pressure liquid refrigerator and it's going to go in to my expansion device. The expansion device has an adjustable orifice and the idea behind the orifice is to drop the pressure of the refrigerant entering the evaporator. By dropping the temperature of the, or the pressure of the uh, refrigerant going into the evaporator, I also drop the temperature. This now means the refrigerant is at a cooler temperature and we can pull heat out of the cap. As it enters the TXV, again, it's a high temperature, high pressure liquid. It goes through the orifice. It now becomes a low temperature, low pressure liquid refrigerant. So you'll notice when you look at these boards, you'll notice on the bottom tube, the clear tube, you're going to see liquid refrigerant coming in. As it moves back and forth through the evaporator, we're going to gain heat energy. The refrigerant is going to start to boil. And as the refrigerant starts to boil, it's going to expand. And that's where the term, the expansion valve, comes from. As soon as I get the pressure drop, it gains heat energy, it starts to evaporate and starts to expand. In the center here is another tube. We've talked about latent heat of evaporation. This is where heat energy is absorbed. We go through a stated change with no change in temperature. This is the greatest amount of exchange of heat energy taking place. So what you'll notice on the center tube is you're going to notice half liquid, half vapor. And then of course it keeps going through the evaporator and keeps gaining heat. As it gains heat, it'll have to come down through a complete state of change. Now we can start gaining what's called superheat. Superheat now is an increase in temperature with no increase in pressure. The expansion valve has an adjustable orifice. So there's a sensing ball attached to the outlet or the tailpipe of the evaporator. And what it's actually measuring is superheat. And by controlling or looking at that superheat, it's going to control or try to maintain that state of change taking place very close to the center of the evaporator. So coming out of the evaporator now, we're going to have a low pressure, low temperature vapor. The next event is the compression. So coming into the compressor is a low pressure, low temperature vapor. The compressor is going to do two things for me. One, it's going to pump the refrigerant through the system, but the other thing is actually going to compress the refrigerant. And by compressing the refrigerant, it raises the pressure. And because of the pressure temperature relationship of the refrigerant, it also raises the temperature. Now this means I'm able to give up that heat energy to the atmosphere. So coming out of the compressor now, I'm going to have a high temperature, high pressure vapor. It comes into the condenser. And you'll notice when you look at the board, the top tube, you're going to see vapor coming in. What you guys are actually going to see is a kind of a greenish haze. The greenish haze is the dye and the oil going through the system. And as it goes back and forth through the system, and ram air or the condenser fan blows across the condenser, we start giving up that heat energy. And we start to get latent heat of condensation. So what latent heat of condensation is, of course, we now have a change of state taking place, but no change in temperature. So what you'll notice in the center of the condenser now, we'll start to see half liquid, half vapor. And now, as we start going back and forth, through the condenser, it's going to give up some more of that heat energy. And we're going to get what we call subcooling taking place. So subcooling now is a change in temperature and no change in pressure. So what you'll notice coming out of the compressor now, or sorry, out of the condenser, will be liquid refrigerant. Liquid refrigerant will now continue up and off to my receiver dryer. Receiver dryer is a storage container it's going to dry the refrigerant, so it's going to remove any moisture, and it's going to filter any of the contamination. Some people refer to this as a final condenser. And the reason is, you may run into a situation that a complete state of change has not taken place. And we, as we saw in, when we talked about the receiver dryer, that receiver dryer picks up in the bottom. And when you guys have a look at this board, you'll notice there's a clear tube here, and you can actually see refrigerant, liquid refrigerant is sitting up to here. So 
it comes in, drops down. If there's any vapor, this being out, it can actually give up that heat energy, but it pulls the liquid off and off to the expansion device. So that assures us then nothing but liquid refrigerant is headed off to the TXV or the expansion device.